Hi, my name is Scott Grimshaw. I'm Chief Technology Officer, Colna Tech. Colna Tech began as a concept with Wendy Jameson, my business partner, and I in the fall of 2009. Um, at the time, I owned a tech company that was involved in just some basic R&D on thin film science. Wendy and I had met, we actually met online uh, just as a, as a casual relationship and, and it basically evolved into a business one where Wendy's experiences in marketing and business development and, and my experience is primarily in technology. Um, we had an idea at the time about the changing world of thin film. As, as you may know, the world switching to flexible electronics, the flat panel display is ubiquitous now. And, and things are changing so rapidly that the measurement tools are falling behind. So I have over 20 plus years experience in thin film measurement and some of the things I've been working on my company before Colnatech began to have application in industry. So Colnatech was formed to capitalize on novel technologies for industries that are going to be operating at the nanoscale level. So that would include, uh, initially it was an atomic layer deposition or semiconductor. Initially it was solar cells uh, using a process called CIGS, flexible solar cells, or thin film as well. And then also organic light emitting diode work. Because I had some business contacts in Asia and Wendy and I had been invited to visit uh, a couple large electronic firms. So, so we got our start knowing we needed some advanced technology to allow manufacturing and research of thin film devices to proceed faster. And then we got into direct market application. So we arrived today at atomic layer deposition actually fits very well what we've been researching and, and developing prototypes for in the past three years. We have developed a hot sensor technology, and that's unique. Traditionally, measurements of thin film have been made using optical techniques, mass techniques, so we call it QCM or microbalance, and physical techniques, the profilometers and, and so forth. In the world of microbalances, they traditionally operate at 20 degrees centigrade plus or minus. That worked well for using the microbalance as an atomic level or an angstrom level device for the manufacture of optical elements, metallizations, so forth, things, traditional thin film coatings. The microbalance has been tried over the years to measure processes that require a much higher temperature than 20 degrees C. Well, some of those processes are atomic layer deposition, chemical vapor deposition, and even some of these new plasma enhanced processes. So we took a sensor in the world of the microbalance technology and made it operate at elevated temperatures. This elevated temperature opened up new avenues and new markets. So given this ability to measure at high temperature, what markets would really benefit? Well, first and foremost, it actually began, became useful in the thin film solar business because the manufacture of some of these thin film solar cells requires very high heat. And it's very difficult to measure, for example, the selenium chemistry in a CIGS solar cell. So there was a big market demand in, in the late 2009, early 2010 for that type of sensor. So immediately our hot sensor technology focused on thin film solar. But as that market started to rapidly decay, decay we also developed a hot sensor technology for organic electronics. Why is this useful? Well, organic electronics are produced generally roll-to-roll -roll or continuous sheet production. Sensor technology must last a very long time. The microbalance science that we're familiar with has a finite life. You can only measure so much on a given sensor before it fails. Well, we developed a technique to elevate the sensor temperature on, during its off time to regenerate it, make it last over and over. So, so that was a secondary market we're still pursuing and we do have customers um, in intensive evaluation. So that would be the OLED market or organic thin film market, which is now spread to solar cells, electronics and so forth. And the third market is semiconductor or larger market chemical vapor deposition. 
We do a tonic layer deposition as a subset of CVD in the sense that your temperatures begin to become important at 200 C all the way up to as high as 1000 C. And in our work with solar, we actually developed sensors that operate at 600, 700 C. And I did work in 2003 for a project in the U.S. with the National Science Foundation where I was using a sensor at 900 C. So the semiconductor industry began to find out about us. We approached them as well. And so our third market and the one that we're actually actively focusing on is CVD slash ALD market. We have a product we've called the Tempe system. It is a temperature controlled sensor with an operating range from 20 degrees centigrade up to currently for the production unit 500 degrees C. It also has a capability, when I, when I describe sensor by the way, I mean a, an element, in this case quartz or similar to single crystal quartz, contained in a housing, the housing can be made of stainless steel or in future models titanium, that allows electrical contacting of the element and an electronic system that matches to it to do all the measurements. We named the sensor head itself, the housing, the Tempe system with this temperature control. We named the electronic system the Eon. The combination of those two together gives you a, a closed loop system for atomic level measurements. And I stress atomic level because the microbalance can measure angstrom level resolution, sub monolayer coatings, and that produces a perfect mate match for ALD. So our Tempe system with the Eon electronics is geared specifically for ALD and a further extension of that product that we, we've named the Helios is a very tightly sealed sensor because ALD gases tend to break down everywhere you don't want them to break down. So to produce a sensor specific for ALD, you have to make things nearly hermetically sealed. So that's our offering in a nutshell, the Tempe and Eon system. Yeah, the market really has shrunk over the years competitively to only a handful of commercial microbalance firms. Those competitors still operate in the 20, excuse me, the 20 degree centigrade regime. They still require water-cooled sensors. They still look at measurement science um, in, in, a, in a rather mundane sense. And I mean by that is the competitors we have can measure sub-model layer films. But what they don't take into account is that there are thermal transients and pressure waves and other interfering factors that influence the sensitivity and resolution of microbalances in atomic layer deposition. So if you compare us to the competitors, we would be like the sports car of electronics and metrology, and they would be like the passenger vehicle. They, they make a, an object or a sensor system that works well, does what it's designed to do very well, but has no capability for high performance. And that high performance used to be a theoretical or a um, a nice feature to have but not necessary. But as you follow the world of ALD, you realize that high sensitivity and reproducibility of measurements is going to be critical to produce the films that people are using ALD for. So Colantech has designed not only a, a very advanced microbalance thickness sensor system, we are now integrating other process factors in ALD so we can real-time measure those and produce new information that will advance precursor development, um, in-process in situ measurement, and even maintenance of the systems, believe it or not. Because as you're familiar with ALD, ALD and the research level needs high precision measurements. ALD on the production level needs highly uh, reproducible measurements and highly controlled. But on the production side of things, where all the money will be made in any process, you also have to maintain systems. And since we're gearing our products for semiconductor, we have found that one of the major applications for ALD sensors will be post wafer processing, the exhaust. So there are three areas that we are focusing on that we have addressed that our competitors haven't. 
and combined our capabilities now allow the ALD market to grow even faster. So we have industrial people using this, and as you know, they're very secretive. Um, we have academic institutions using this, of, of which the Fraunhofer is, for us, one of the more exciting possibilities. And, and we have a, actually a waiting list for people wanting to use our, our science to see if it can benefit them. I wish I had 20 more engineers and a lot more um, um, time because it's staggering. My experience in thin film goes back to my work in college. I worked for Xerox Research Center in New York and did thin film silicon. And at the time we were using ion beam deposition, which was very new. Well, I looked at the applications of that science and thought it was exciting. But now as I become more aware of ALD, this is a technology that's now finding its time. It's niche in the world of science. And we're discovering the applications are so broad from medical, you know, the, the thin film protection of joints and, and of um, implants to packaging for uh, vapor barriers, for permeation barriers, to encapsulation, to, uh, to semi, to, to things I haven't even imagined. And, and for us, for Wendy and, and me, we're thinking this, this, is a, this like wraps up all of the fun of science in this atomic level world that one could ask for. And, and if we had the resources, as any, any new business uh, will tell you, um, we could probably attack the market in a bigger way. But, but we're quite happy to be doing what we're doing, and the response has been excellent. Um, Colnet Tech is a unique hybrid type company. We believe in as much in research as we do in, in production of systems and product. We don't believe that making one product and letting it sit in the market for years and simply just selling over and over again is, is a philosophy of life we want to embrace. First and foremost, we, we like the excitement that, that the world is, is creating. The ALD is maybe one facet of science, but for us, it's a gateway into changing how things are done. Um, we have seen through our travels how we can turn windows into solar cells and, and walls into lights. And, and I see as part of that, we are going to give the tools to people who need them. And we are very open to, to collaboration, suggestion, even criticism. Because we don't think our job ever will be done, but we find that the journey is as much fun as the end result. And we, we want people to know they can share that with us. You are... You are, as we say in the U.S., kick ass. You are moving fast. Um, and I think what you're doing is a wonderful thing because, um, you know, the, it's like if you merged social media and science, you're going you're gonna to end up with a, a rapidly changing landscape. And, and, and scientists are already doing that, but, but your approach is refreshing because it gives people a place, a homepage to land on. And so I think it's great. I, I love this. Wendy likes it. I mean, but given, I believe you put on your webpage April of 2013, you launched the site. I mean, my gosh, in just two months, look at you done. So you've already interviewed the coolest people around. Thank you.